Hey and welcome to Neverwinter with Aragorn. So with our new zone, our Dragonborn Vale, we have a pretty massive map here divided into three sections currently that are usable. This fourth section up here, there are some mobs and areas there, but nothing that we can explore fully as this area in the circle is blocked off to us. Now in this video, I'd like to go over all of those mini boss hunts where you can obtain this clothing. Now, many of this clothing is pretty garbage. You can see, for example, this one here is just going to, at the start of combat, give you a random stat of 8% for 10 seconds. That's just no good for anyone since it's random. Now, there are some very good pieces, namely, if you look at this piece, you gain 5% combat advantage, but you will lose 25% control resistance. That extra combat advantage will lead you to deal a good bit more damage. Now we also have a very good piece there. Again, a shirt for healers. It will give you 5% outgoing healing, but you will lose 25% control resistance. And those are the only two good shirts there. The pants are pretty met as well. They do have an effect of dazing and that's pretty much it. This is the clothing. Now a bunch of this you will obtain with seals. You can see any of the ones there that down on the bottom that it says you find it in the seal store. The rest of them, however, you will find from Dragon Bone Veil bosses. And these will be all the mini bosses. So the first mini boss we will encounter is we just need to go here on the first section up top and we'll have to make our way up this grapple. And once we're up here, we'll be able to fight this boss, which we have some other guy already fighting him and he's called the wolf. Now, each of these bosses will also drop you reagents, important reagents that you may need. Now, sometimes they drop nothing. But what they can drop is these ancient dwarven materials that you'll need for the Dragonbone Veil store. You'll see here we have acquired eight of them. It will also give you this corrupted fragments. Now the next mini boss is Lieutenant Vriel and he'll just be around this corner and he should be just standing here and we can go and kill him off and again he will drop you either the shirt and pants, give you either a corrupted fragment or even a ancient dwarven material. So that's that boss. And then again, that's located right here on the map. And then we'll go to our next boss and it will be a roaming boss. It'll be one that will move around and he'll, I believe, initially spawn where I'm right now. And he'll make his way along this river. Again, at the end of this video, I'll have a map which will showcase exactly where each of them spawn and the trail that they go on. Now, this boss will end about here and then return back along its path. And we can see we encounter him here. And again, we can just kill him off and he'll randomly give you one of those shirt and pants. However, sometimes they don't drop. There's about 25% chance they do. And they'll generally give you a corrupted fragment and also either a ancient dwarven materials, which is the lowest drop rate. And that's three bosses in the top section. So now we'll go and head down to the middle section. Now here you will have to get on top of that bridge. And to do so, you'll take the grapple here, then the grapple over to there and we'll be able to see the mini boss. He is the Dwarven King or the Mad King, as we can see him there. And we can again kill him off and he has the same loot table as the other ones. I'll give you a shirt and pants. There he gave us some pants. As we can see in our inventory, we've gathered a whole bunch more of them as well. And I believe he also gave us a corrupted fragments. Each of them do guard these chests, but they're again, very useless but they can give green insignias. So if you're into grinding that, then you can. The next boss we will see is down here. He can spawn along this pathway that I am taking. We're literally just around this big hilltop. You have a bunch of groups of mobs just camping it out around as well. And we can just keep going around and potentially run into him. And you can see when we do, he's basically a guy who will ride this Drake and you'll have to kill him. You get just down to a certain amount of HP and they'll split off. And then you have to kill both of them and then you'll again get your rewards, which will be the same rewards as all of the other mini bosses. Now, the next mini boss, and we're going to have to travel up here again using our grapple ability. It's pretty cool. Then we have to go into this cave up here. You can come in from the other side as well. You can see this long tunnel with kind of this aqueduct. Just around the corner, you will find 
the boss here, the ancient machination. So it'll be a, like a big golem. And again, you'll kill him. He'll again have the same chance to give you shirt, pants, corrupted fragments, and ancient dwarven materials. They all have, again, the same loot table. Now, to get up this way, you could get to this grapple from just down here. As we can see, you can, you can latch onto it there by highlighting it green, and you'd be able to get up there. Now, the next area is down here. And we're going to have just two more bosses there again. Now, the next boss you might run into is the charred one. And again, he is a roaming boss and I most likely won't find him here on the character. So I'll show you the recording where you can go and just run into him and we can kill him. And again, it's the exact same loot table. But he takes the path of from where I am right now on the map. Again, you can see it there. And he'll take the path down here and he'll just keep following along until he runs into a player and tries to kill them and then he might die and then he'll just respawn back he'll continue along this pathway all the way around this corner he goes on for quite a while might even run into him if somebody hasn't killed him but i did pretty recently with that recording and he'll continue to make his way through under this bridge and we've run into him here that's very neat this being the charred one. He's another mini boss, we kill him, he gives us there some pants, and again, a corrupted fragment. And he'll just make his way just over to where I am right now, and he'll make his way back and forth, and he'll originally spawn up there on the hill. And the next boss is just along this way, we are going to need to grapple up to here, and he's tucked away in this corner of the map. We can see him there, Ognir the Lost, and he's just sitting kind of mournfully down there. Again, we can just finish him off and he'll have the same loot table. This time he gives us some more pants there. Again, each of these bosses will usually guard some treasure ones, at least not the non-roaming ones. And we can have a look at what they give. You can see he's just giving some potions there, some coppers and some black pearls. This other chest here, let's see what it'll obtain. Just some black pearls. And we have another one over here again which you can see just some more potions. And sometimes they can drop you green insignias. Now that's all of those bosses. And so here is the map for you guys, just to display each of those bosses and where they're located. You have those three roaming bosses. Here you have the big bear. Here you have the commander dragon guy, who'll just navigate around that. And here you have the charged one who will just navigate along this green path back and forth. You have the ancient machination who will just be within that tunnel in there. Unfortunately, you can't light up it on the map there. The Mad King's located on that bridge just up there. And the wolf is up on the alcove there, along with the Lieutenant Vriel just around the corner a little bit higher again up there. And that is then all of the mini bosses along with Ognir the Lost tucked away just up here. Again, each of those mini bosses, all they're going to drop you is those shirt and pants. So initially they're going to be pretty hotly contested by DPS just to gain those pants there. You can see that has that 5% combat advantage, but you do lose 25% control resistance. Now there are a few of those pants which give that combat advantage. This one I haven't obtained and it has that control resistance, crit strike and recharge speed. Whereas the other 5% combat advantage one gives deflect severity and combat advantage. So I guess you'd be better off with the deflect severity just for a bit more survivability. And overall, otherwise you would just go for the healer ones. Now, very neatly, all of these shirt and pants are all not going to be bound. So at the beginning, the prices are going to be pretty high. Once you equip them, they're bound to your character. But as the time goes on, people will drop these because what you will also farm these enemies for, these mini bosses, is the ancient dwarven materials, which you can see is in the Dragon Bone Veil vale merchant store here. You can, I have eight of them, and let's pop over and we can actually show you exactly what they're for. So what you'll need to do is head to any seals vendor, like this guy right here, and you'll want to spend your seals of the north. Now with those seals, you can see we can purchase all of these different equipments. Now what you can do is you can buy these weapons. You can buy these weapons and upgrade them, or you can purchase this armor and upgrade them. Now none of this gear is actually very good. You can see here you have your full armor set, that being that one there. And then you'll also have your shirt and pants. You'll have actually six shirts and six pants to choose from. All of them just giving a random stat there. And then otherwise they just have that own setup 
of different stats. So these pieces of gear are nothing special. You would use them if you literally have nothing else. But what you can do, since they have very high item level, is even go and upgrade them further. For example, if you don't have the rib cage, you could get this ancient scale breakers hide and you could hope to get the accuracy, the combat or the combat advantage for their extra damage. Otherwise, gaining the headpiece for your critical severity could be somewhat neat. And the boots are pretty, again, useless. Some movement speed and recharge speed, not the worst, but you're not going to deflect attacks often if you aren't stacking deflect. So again, let's just go and purchase one of these items and we can get, let's say, these armor piece and we can get that upgraded. It does cost you 900 of those seals. And now what you do is you go to the store and you can see we can now upgrade that scale breakers rebel hide to legendary. That'll be from, from that items we have in our inventory of 1,700 all the way just 100 item level more to legendary 1,800. Now, just saying that upgrading this gear is absolutely your last priority in regards to upgrading. What you want to do is obtain those weapons, these ancient hand axe, this ancient silhouette, that's for the rogue, and upgrade them to the legendary version. And you only want to do this if you're a newer player and don't have, let's say, the Lionheart or the Celestial, since these will give the bonuses, but they only give of stats. You can see on Epic there, they only have a chance of 10% to boost the stat by 4%, depending on your roll. That's recharge speed for DPS, tanks, stamina gain, and healers action point gain. But when you upgrade it, the set becomes even better. You can see you will then straight up gain that stat. No chance involved. DPS will gain 5% power. Tanks 5% awareness and healers 5% outgoing healing, along with then a chance still on those encounters, but to gain 7.5% of that extra stat. But again, not as good as like the Lionheart or the Celestial with a bonus of 7.5%. There is, of course, the Masterwork ones as well. And in order to actually obtain these weapons, you're going to have to obtain these dragon weapon caches, which then you can claim any of the weapons of these certain classes. For example, we obtain those there and then we can look at our collections and we have those claimed and then we can get them upgraded to legendary. And to obtain these caches, you're actually going to need to grind out those dragon sight artifacts, which show you the treasure locations, which then you'll dig up. Again, I'll go over that in another video. So in order to get those upgraded, again, you would go to the store. So you can see with the Crimson Scale Breakers Rebel Hide here, we can get that upgraded from our Epic version to our Legendary version. And the reagents you will require for upgrading these weapons, you can see will be 50 of those corrupted fragments. That's those reagents, again, that you get from those mini bosses. That's these corrupted fragments. And then you will also need, as we can see, 25 of those Dragon Veil alloys. And lastly, you will need 10 of these Ancient Dwarven materials. Ancient Dwarven materials, again, comes from the mini bosses. These Dragon Bone Veil alloys come from the treasure locations that you will find using those Dragon Sight artifacts. Again, I'll make another map for all those locations and give more details on them again. And lastly, of course, you will need that weapon with the seals. And you can get both of those upgraded, but it is a long grind but not too long, all things considered, since I just did this in one day, this grind. So that's going to wrap up this video. Again, here is the map. You can either screenshot it or there will be a link in the description where you can simply download it. So again, hopefully this has been somewhat insightful to you guys as what's to come with module 22 and how getting this gear is going to work with these different systems. There is also a treasure map system, which I will go through in another video. Again, if I presented this well, consider leaving the video a like. And if you're new around here, consider subscribing. We'll see you guys around. Goodbye for now.